Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be re-reviewing Viper VPN and putting it into the 2.0 rating system. Now we already rated Viper VPN before and it was a pretty good VPN. But now going forward, we're going to be rating VPNs more stricter and putting Viper VPN through the paces. This video is going to be a little bit shorter than normal. I'm trying out a new re, -re I'm trying out a new review format, um, doing things quicker and more to the point. I'm really just going to be going to the end of the review, the end of my findings to show you guys what the scores are. But these new reviews are going to be a new different format, a little bit quicker paced, a little bit more getting information as quick as possible. Just giving you the highlights, which probably is very useful to a lot of you that don't have a lot of time. So guys, let's go ahead and start out. This is Viper VPN and what it looks like. Let's go through the each category itself. In terms of pricing, Viper VPN is going to be pretty expensive. They have a lot of discounts and different promotions. That's kind of hard to keep track of for me. But overall, it's a decently expensive VPN. Long term, though, you can get pretty good deals on it. I think it's like around $69 for three years, which is a pretty good deal. Um, I did have a hard time finding if there was any price increases, but I couldn't find any information about that. So for now, I gave it a point for not having one. Um, that said, Viper VPN does have timers occasionally, and it only has around six uh, simultaneous connections, I believe, so it didn't meet the full requirements there. Overall, you can get like two months for $13 right now, but I think it's kind of like a special Halloween thing going on, so it couldn't meet most of these requirements here. It kind of either wants you to pay a lot for one month or sign up long term, which is not the best kind of blend of commitment pricing I like. You know, take for example something like WeVPN, it's pretty affordable for every single commitment plan you could want, which is, you know, what we prefer on the channel to give you guys that option. Next up in terms of the application itself, um, Viber VPN does pretty well here. It gets all the fundamentals like WireGuard, kill switches, has Fire Stick support, browser extensions, a good interface. It has ad blocking, tons of DNS controls. It is missing um, a Linux GUI. It also doesn't have split tunneling, which some people like. So that way you can have a VPN on for something and not other things. Obfuscation it does have, so if you're in a censored country or having trouble accessing VPN, it has those options with the Chameleon Protocol. Um, I couldn't find information about Sockside Proxy support. Um, some people said it had it, but I couldn't really find information on the website, so I didn't give any points there. Dedicated IPs, I couldn't find any information there either. And overall, it doesn't really seem to have that many extra things going for it in terms of what we're looking for later on, in terms of complementary privacy offerings. Stuff like data breach notifications, encrypted DNS, other things like that. Um, and in terms of speeds, I was probably most disappointed by this in this review. For some reason, I just wasn't getting the speeds that I kind of want to get with a WireGuard supported VPN. I don't know what it is about uh, Viper VPN. I've talked to the team in the past and they said they were trying to um, make a better server network or optimize speeds or something like that and give better speeds for people in the US. But I still haven't seen that to date. And in my speed test, I was getting around three to 400 megabits per second. And subsequently in my torrent test, I was only getting around 30 to 40 megabytes a second, which is around half the speeds I can get with some of the top VPNs here on the channel. Stuff like TorGuard, WeVPN, and Hide.me all give me around 70 to 80 uh, megabytes a second and megabits a second, um, 700 to 800 megabits per second. So those are kind of way faster than a Viper. Overall, decent, but nothing that great. Going into the privacy audit, um, I was really shocked to see how many ad trackers Viper VPN has. In fact, I even posted about it on Twitter because I was so surprised. Viper VPN has 10 ad trackers, five third party cookies. It could be monitoring your keystrokes and mouse clicks. It tells Facebook when you visit the website and using Google Analytics. So overall, Viper VPN and not doing too well here. It also didn't pass the Exodus test, which means it does have trackers on Android. There are not really many other complimentary privacy services included. Um, the good news is it does seem to be owned by the same company, Golden Frog, and there hasn't been any huge scandals or data leaks or mismanagement of data. So at least there's that. Unfortunately, I couldn't also find two-factor authentication in the account settings for the website. So if someone does get your password, they could probably get into your account fairly easily. There could be some form of email two-factor authentication, but nothing account-wide with um, codes like that you can use on your Authenticator app. One thing that did really impress me going forward though with um, Viper VPN is that they have amazing customer support, which is really good. I sent a support ticket in asking for a refund and I got a response in only like five minutes. Um, we looked for one hour, so the fact that I could get three or four responses within one hour is quite simply very, very good and shows uh, that Viper VPN does want to take care of its customers, which is easier said than done. Um, if you look at most VPNs, around only four or five VPNs out of all of them I've tested this year have been able to meet that response time. So overall, they did a really good job there. 
In terms of streaming, though, we saw a kind of mixed performance. Uh, Netflix wasn't really working for some reason. I couldn't unblock US restrictions. However, we did get good reports with Hulu, BBC iPlayer, and Prime Video. For some reason, HBO Max wasn't working either, though. So a little bit of a mixed bag there. And overall, not the best streaming VPN, but it could be good um, for some of these other services, I guess. Overall, Viper VPN is a 38.12 um, out of 60 VPN. If we look on the tier list, that's going to put it right above Surfshark at the top of B tier. I think this is a fairly respectable spot for Viper VPN. It's perfectly usable and in some cases very good with the application, but it does need improvements in most every single category. The privacy section is horrendous. Um, streaming is a mixed bag. The pricing can be expensive and pushes you to the long-term commitments. And overall, it's just not the best product in terms of my rating system. I recommend you guys to check out these ones in S tier and use my promo code TOMSPARK to get the best deal. If you guys like Viper VPN, feel free to check that out. Stay up to date with the tier list by going to vpntierlist.com and also check out the subreddit, subscribe to my Twitter for account updates, and check out some of my favorite tools or even this VPN quiz. Anyways, guys, let me know how you like this new uh, kind of quicker format down in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next video very soon.